what's needed to run these big plants now. Um, almost every plant I'm in, I see that they've invested in the smart technology for the pressure transmitters, their microprocessor base. They got the heart technology, and and the, the transmitters are so accurate right now. You can't even there's nothing in the plant you can even calibrate them with. They're so they're so accurate. But but the uh, the issue is is that we got all this great accuracy here and this great control, and and what are we doing with it? Well, we're sending that signal out to uh, since it's electronic now coming from the DCS, you're sending it to a little I to P transducer that's sitting out in the plant, and it's sending the 3 to 15 signal over here to your pneumatic positioner that's sitting on your control valve with some linkage slop and everything else, and, and this is the one you're actually doing the true controlling with. So uh, that is the point, and that is the issue. So the weakest link in this whole thing is the positioner. You've got good control valves, you've got good transmitters, you've got good DCS system, but uh, a conventional pneumatic or electro pneumatic positioner, uh, right out of the box, the stated accuracy of the positioner when it's not connected to anything is plus or minus 1% when it's new. Uh, after it's installed, you have hysteresis in this linkage. You've got a slide bar, you've got a stem, you've got slop, and, uh, and at best you're going to get 5% uh, accuracy at that point, plus there's going to be continuous drift because these things are always drifting. They have a zero and a span nut and adjustments, they're always uh, drifting. These, these uh, positioners are also very dirt sensitive, and everybody's got dirty air, and, and we all know it. Uh, this schematic up here shows you all the springs and the cams and the flappers and nozzles that are inside one of these pneumatic positioners, and uh, they tend to clog up and have a lot of dirt problems and maintenance problems. So the point is the high accuracy of the smart transmitters and the DCS, in my mind, is wasted. Um, and the efficiency of your system just isn't, isn't optimized the way it could be. Uh, there's a lot of high maintenance recalibrations required on these, especially if you uh, I to P transducer is separate, which I see in a lot of plants. Uh, you've got to calibrate the transducer. You've got to calibrate the positioner. Uh, the fact that they're separated means that you have to add the the uh, square root of the accuracies to both of those to get the total accuracy, which even rises even worse. So, so anyway, uh, here's an example, and this is actually generous uh, of of a control valve's performance, uh, conventional positioner on it. The black line is actually the DCS sending a signal out to tell the valve to move. And in this situation, DCS said, OK, go up uh, from looks like 70, a little bit over 70% open, up to about 85% open. And you can see what the valve, first there was a delay here. And then when it went up, it way overshot the set point, And it sat there and oscillated for a while. And, and then finally, uh, may have got back down the line, but many times it won't even get to the line. It will just ride along near. Notice another delay here when the DCS said, well, we need to go full open here. And uh, there was a delay here of it looks like about 10 seconds before the valve even started to move. And then, so you get the point is that these, these things are, are not accurate. They're moving around. They're, they're not, uh, if you're trying to do drum level or whatever, uh, they're not very, very accurate at all. Uh, several manufacturers are making what's called the smart positioners right now. These are the three leaders in the industry. This is Siemens PS2 up here. This is Mason Eon Smart Valve Interface, and this is Fisher's Field View. All three of these are uh, very good smart positioners. They all have pretty much the same types of features. Uh, the accuracy of these, 0.2% with minimal long-term drift. That's a whole lot better than 5 to 10 is what we were talking about before. Uh, they all have what's called auto-calibrate and zero and span. You literally push a button on these or use the software that comes with them, and they will set the zero and the span of your, of your valve stroke. You push another button, and they will auto-tune uh, to the valve that they're actually on. They all have remote communications using hard software, which everybody's got. Uh, they are not dirt sensitive, and uh, they, can, uh, they actually create a valve signature that matches each valve. Now, the plus of that, or what the, why that's important, is that you can take one of these smart positioners and you can put it on a little actuator like this, could be a one-inch valve, or you could put it on a 12-inch valve that's got the biggest diaphragm actuator that they make. You can use the same positioner because they will actually look at the stroking speed and the airflow to move the valve, and they'll see how fast they'll actually will monitor how fast the valve moves to a control signal increase and it will build a PID algorithm inside to help with the control of that. So when it gets that signal again, it will know that, like this valve, they said it's not going to move very quick when I get the signal, so I need to, to adjust my uh, calibration there. 
This one, the valve's going to move in a split second when it gets the signal because it's hardly any air required to move it. That's what it can do. It actually creates a valve signature for each valve. There's little to no maintenance on these. They don't, some of them don't even have moving parts. They're all uh, digital inside. They use uh, um, Hall Effect technology where there's no touching of, of parts, no movement. Uh, it's all electronic. And by far, this is really a quantum leap in performance over the uh, conventional positioners. Um, here's an example of a 5 to 8 percent step test. Uh, you can see the black line is the actual controller sending the signal. The blue line is the actual valve and actually getting to those points. Look how well, when I mentioned about the PID algorithms, look how these, the valve actually curves into the set point. It doesn't overshoot it. It doesn't ripple and go along. It actually curves in. It goes right to the set point and locks in. Okay, those were small steps. Look at a big step here. Look at this. We're going from 10% open all the way to 90% open. Look at that. Is that smooth or not? It's just, uh, I mean, it's amazing how well these things work and, and they're really simple. Here's a stability test. When these things get on a line, you can see here where, where it, 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 was, it was trying to get on the line. Other positioners will actually ride along next to it. They won't try to resolve the fact that they're not on the line. These positioners will actually resolve constantly to say, I've got to get back on the line. And they get on it and they lock into it. OK, uh, finishing up here, in my mind, one of the most important features, besides all those great things we talked about there with the smart positioners that are available today, is a, what's called a tight shutoff feature. Uh, we mentioned earlier a typical globe valve or globe control valve has a class 4 shutoff. If you use a conventional positioner on it, when it's in a closed position, uh, you may not be aware that the, the positioner is actually still sending some air into the actuator that is to the open side of the actuator. So what's really going on is the positioner only vents enough air pressure to let the spring override the, the air pressure and get the valve to where it thinks the closed position is. But the, but the problem is it's not the full force of the spring pushing down on the valve to close it. It's just hover. It's, it's in a balance mode is really what's going on. So if you had some real dynamics uh, pushing up on the bottom of your uh, the, the plug and, you know, underneath the line, you potentially could force that thing open and you could have, or this thing could even just be sitting there chattering and you wouldn't even know it. Okay, one of the things about the, uh, the programmable smart positioners is that they have what they call this tight shutoff feature that you program into it. It's really easy to do. It's just, it's just clicking a, an option. And it would allow you to say, when that valve starts closing, when it gets to 2% open, uh, I want this thing to vent all the air that's in the actuator. And it does. And you get the full force of the spring pushing down on that plug and that seat. And, and you will get your full class 4 shutoff, not what you think you were getting. So, uh, power plants absolutely love this. This saves the valves. Uh, the, you know, they, they, they last longer. The seat rings don't get torn up as much. You don't have that little seat leakage there at the bottom. So it's a big deal. OK, uh, I really want to thank everyone for attending this. Uh, please feel free to contact me or if you have any questions in the future. Uh, those are, uh, that's my contact information and my email. And uh, we're going to go to the next screen here and take your questions. I've also got my information there. So. Uh, Please let me know if there's any questions.